In playing the curriculum, I will go with the children. So a lot of the time the children are initiating um, not so much the activities, the activities are set, but they're um, demonstrating, they're taking them to a further level, they're doing some different things that you don't expect them to do. Children who wouldn't normally have something to say are coming up with their own ideas, expressing how they feel when it comes to music. The child that doesn't normally want to take part in music wanting to use the instruments, wanting to use the, do the movements, wanting to sing, wanting to express themselves. So each session is, slight, is a bit like a wow moment for me. Obviously sometimes they do go off on a tangent and you have to pull the, rein them back in, but most of the time it's something spontaneous, exciting, and they seem to enjoy it, so you just go with the flow. It's the idea that it might be possible to focus on What's going on in the child's mind um, when dealing with music and seeing if it might be possible to nurture that idea that um, one can have music and can just explore it um, in a free way without any sort of feeling that um, things are right or things are wrong. What appealed to me was the fact that the teachers could gain confidence in teaching music where it was in a non-threatening way. So it allowed them to experiment with music. They didn't feel they had to be a music specialist. Um, and also I think it felt that the, the children would get a great deal from it and again be able to experiment and try different instruments out. I really like new things, I like new creative ideas, so when I heard about the playing the curriculum scheme I was really interested in it because there is this fear with teachers generally um, about teaching music, so when I heard about this approach where it really explores their creativity I was very interested to find out more about it. Um, for me it was a bit uncomfortable as it were going along because I'm less creative than say Nigeria is, yes. so I prefer the structure, the order knowing what I'm doing, knowing the order. And the kids, in a way, likes the free flow of it all because they didn't feel they had to learn um, what felt like a formality of rhythm and rhyme and tone, even though it was probably embedded in there. It wasn't something that you taught as a solid structure. It just flowed with everyday objects, everyday sounds. And I think the only time that anything similar to that that I'm reminded of would maybe in art, you have a particular purpose or yeah. uh, aim and a, a child who's more creative does something interesting and you say, hey, you can even try it like this. Mm. And they go off on a tangent and you don't mind that because it's a creative idea from a child. I'm not a specialist teacher. Um, I do love music. I do like listening and playing music. It's opened my eyes and my ears as what you can do with music rather than just listening to expressing yourself in different ways, listening to the beats that you can hear um, giving it a chance just to sink into your brain and then expressing it differently. So that's what I've learned from these sessions. I think for me, I've discovered from this that music doesn't have to necessarily be controlled or structured in the way that you've planned it in your head because every child has their own idea to how they see the same piece of music. So you're creating music via the children, via their imagination. So it's quite open-ended, a lot more than I initially thought. What can sometimes be pushed to one side is the idea of free uh, exploration and uh, free creativity. Uh, and that, that can be lost sometimes. And I think, I think, you know, I think that most music teachers would agree because, you know, you've got an awful lot of children right in front of you, you've got a limited period of time, uh, you're dealing with something which actually creates sound. Um, so, you know, the feeling that chaos is not very far away, you know, is always there. But, but it is important, I think, to try and hold on to the, uh, the sense of creativity. And that's, that's what this project is looking at. Today, for instance, um, the children were in pairs and they were singing to each other. It was a call and response called Oleo. So they were taking some turns, just singing very, very quietly. But two of the children decided to put some movements. So the child who was starting would put in a movement 
and the other one was copying. They, they were just putting in all these wonderful movements without being asked, because that, that, in fact, was the next step in this activity, was for the children to put in a movement to their, when they were singing their part of the call and response. We've read Hunter Surprise, so I wanted them to focus on the animals in the story and if they can make a sound that they can think of when, they, when I say an animal they remember an animal in the story. So I didn't give them a roar with a lion. I just said, OK, think of something yourself. So some of them came up with saying the actual names of the animals, like la la lion and m m monkey. Or some of them were actually making the sounds like roar or the sound of a monkey. Um, and so I kept, kept that open-ended. I made it a task where they're using the whiteboard as though it's um, a keyboard and they write the sounds on that. <laughs> There was variety in the way you presented it. Mm. It was always interesting for them. It was always something else to explore. I mean, the first they did, for example, they had an example where they were just um, humming a tune um, in pairs and going high and low. And then they had something very similar where they think it's called Parsi ad lib, where you, it's almost like um, Chinese whispers and, and, you, and you'd pass the tune on. And that was interesting in itself. So they're using sounds, but they're looking at different ways they could explore those sounds mm. and in it create something that had, that had harmony or, or had meaning. But it was based on something they do all the time. <laughs> I just th I think it helps them to come really out of themselves and just be more positive, um, be more forward thinking and also having a say. I think every child has to have a say and they're having their say in their music. But once you get past that feeling of, OK, I think I know where, how to manage um, a creative approach to music, then you feel confident, then off you go because you're not limited anymore. Yeah. And you can decide, okay, let's do have a music lesson now. And you don't necessarily need the musical instruments. Yeah. Uh, you don't necessarily have to teach them something quite formal. You just get on with whatever you've got, even your own voice. But you need to have that sense that, okay, I know how to be, I'm confident, but I'm confident about being creative in this mode of teaching. And then, mm -hmm. yeah. Bob's your uncle. Playing the curriculum, it still has a place for me. I believe it has a place because it's, something that we've lost I think children like that music that innate music ability are something that we've lost so I feel that if there's a way that we can add that to what we already do that would be so much I think it will take the weight off a lot of things and it brings a little bit more fun and creativity <laughs> I'd like to build on it. I'd like to, to keep going uh, with it. And I think uh, whether we go up to year two or include reception as well, um, but I think it's certainly something that within early years in Key Stage 1 we can definitely build on uh, and in a couple of years' time see how it might expand into Key Stage 2. It's an ethos that needs to be promoted a bit more because in our minds it's very structured, this structure, that, which is great, but at the same time we need to we need to embed or allow some more creativity within. So my vision, or what I would really like to see, is that um, schemes such as the playing the curriculum could be embedded in other subjects. And you just have to let go. And I found that it's quite easy to let go and just see what comes up. Because every time you do it, it's always something different. And that's the magic of this session. And then we can see where we want to go with it and that could be exciting and rather like one of these creative projects uh, we don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs>